What's going on, Mark Ridley's? How are we doing tonight? I like the sold out show on a Saturday. You can do better than that. How's everyone doing tonight? Oh, that's awesome. That's much, much better. Uh, a little fact about myself. I lost 88 pounds last year. I lied. Uh, I don't know why I told you guys that. I, uh, but no, I did. I lost some weight last year. I realized I started losing the weight when I stepped on the scale and I realized that my weight was higher than my credit score. <laughs> that is not good. I was closer to getting approved for insulin than I was a Kia. Uh, it's not a good sign. Uh, another reason that made me realize I started losing the weight was I went to this like community buffet and this lady comes up to me and she's just angry from the start. She's like, oh my God, you're so gross. Look at you, you're so fat. Is that gravy all over your shirt? The back of your knees probably stink. And I'm like, damn, Grandma, you brought me here. <laughs> I didn't even want to come to Golden Corral. <laughs> Which is getting bad, though. I put a lot of weight from, you know, COVID and everything. And I just, I'm just trying to get back down to the weight that I was happy with that, you know? Eight pounds, three ounces. <laughs> You think I can do it? I don't know. I'm just trying to see the plate is half full, you know? But uh, give a round of applause for yourselves for coming out tonight, huh? Give a round of applause. <laughs> nice to know people still want to laugh. That's great. I, uh, I feel like right now in America, we're really uptight. Yeah. Can you guys agree on that? Yeah. And like, I get it. I do. There's a lot going on. Inflation, economic crisis, everything with the gun control. It's nuts. But the problem is, is there's all these big things happening and it's trickling down and now we're fighting about things that just don't matter. We are. And I wish people could just sit back and relax and enjoy life for the silly little goose that it is. Because <laughs> life is a silly little goose and we're not appreciating it for how silly willy it is. All right, for example, last week I saw a couple fighting on Facebook whether or not pineapple goes on pizza. Yeah. And I didn't ask, I didn't ask. And, but no, I, I saw that and it started off cute, started off fun, but then a couple thousand likes and a couple thousand comments later, you got people going at it. You got one half being like, pineapple on pizza is delightful. And the other half's like, pineapple on pizza is sin. And they're going back and forth until eventually the husband says to the wife, you know what, that's why I never even liked you, bitch. And I'm like, that's a weird way to have a marriage, but. But people are fighting over things like that. I'm just in the corner having fun, appreciating for how silly it is. I'm just over here like, did you know that four people die every year from vending machines falling on top of them? <laughs> did you know that? <laughs> nah, you do. That's not funny to you guys? For some people, the last thing they see is pressing B4 before they see one vending machine coming down on them. That's hilarious. I love watching full-grown men fight over which college school is better, U of M or Michigan State. I didn't ask. And what I love is these men get into it. They get angry. But one thing I love about us Michiganders is we could be in the middle of a battle of the schools, but if someone goes, Ohio State, we're like, like I love Michigan for that. We got any Ohio State fans in here tonight? Boo! Boo! You suck! You suck! You suck! <laughs> you just want me to twerk the rest of my set? So anyways, as I was saying... Uh, But people want to fight over schools, and I'm just over here like, did you know that 122 people die every year from falling out of their bed while they're sleeping? Yeah, but they, what they do is they roll out of bed, they whack their head on their side table, and they die. So you know how sometimes when you have a dream that you feel like you're falling off a cliff, and then you wake up? Some people don't do that. <laughs> Some people wake up in heaven. Unless you're an Ohio State fan. <laughs> but people want to fight about whether toilet paper goes over or under. Over. I didn't ask. And that's what I'm talking 
talking about? Every time everyone's like, I'm not letting him know. Nobody cares, okay? <laughs> but I'm over here like, did you know that since 2009, only 19 people have died from shark attacks? Yeah, shark attacks. We have Jaws, we have Shark Week. All I'm trying to say is, if you do the math, 33 more people have died from vending machines than shark attacks <laughs> since 2009, and we're not talking about that? That's not funny? Look, all I'm saying is the next time you're standing near a vending machine and you hear, duh, duh, duh <laughs> get to the closest ocean. <laughs> Vending machines to smell fear from miles away. <laughs> we uh, we got any we got any married couples in the room tonight? Make a round of applause if you're in love. <laughs> Isn't love just the greatest feeling in the world? Like four days a week. <laughs> the other three just want <laughs> to chuckle out. Love is great, but outside what we have with our person, love is just so. <laughs> Right, it's just so eh. Like, every couple has a per, they have a place, a thing, a song. Like, whenever their song comes on, they'll look at each other immediately and go, oh, I love you so much, you're the love of my life, you're the best. Mwah, mwah, mwah. But outside that song, love songs are just so eh to us. They are. Like, if you're driving the car and all of me comes on, you'll sing the song because you know the lyrics but because there's no emotional connection to it, you're kind of dead inside. You're just kind of singing it like, all of me, all of you, all your and all your tears. Perfect in Give my all to me. That's it. Life is great. Everything's fine. But why is it that when a good breakup song comes on, we immediately get pumped? And you know what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter if you've been happily married to your person for 40 years or if you've been with them for 40 days. You hear a good breakup song, you're gonna dedicate that song to that douchebag that broke your heart 42 years ago. You're driving in the car and you just hear that ta 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 ta. Here's the thing, we started off flat. <laughs> and we're like, oh, this is my shit. You turn it up, you get into it, you're like, it was cool, but it was all pretend. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, Mark, really. <laughs> but you get into it, you know, you're like, you dedicated, you took the time. By the time you hit the chorus, you're just in your car screaming, such a good You're flipping off pots. You're hitting traffic cones. Every traffic cone you hit, you're like, 10 points for Gryffindor! You're happy, you're angry, you're sad, you're sexually confused. That song will make a full grown man try to hit a falsetto that he doesn't have. He says, they're like, such a good guy! That one's for you. And you just get to your destination all exhausted. You're just there like, since you've been gone, oh, oh, I love that song. Oh, would you look at that? Time to go see the neurologist. And then you just go about your day. <laughs> but one thing I love is that if you and your person break up, that love song that you two have together now turns into a breakup song. It's a whole different song, isn't it? Say all of me comes on after you two break up. It sounds more like all of me hates all of you. All your stupid, ugly faces. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys this, and I'm gonna bring up your next comedian. I, uh, I don't like my doctor. Bad segue, I know. Just work with me. And I don't, I don't like my doctor, and here's why, all right? He always reminds me that I'm his fattest patient. Always has from day one. And I should've knew something was up, because the very first time he walks in the room, he's flipping through the clipboard, he's going through the pages, and he's like, uh, Justin P. Dick? And I go, it's Pedic. He goes, yeah, but it's spelled P E Dick. And me trying to be all funny, I'm like, I know it's a mouthful. He's like, Psh, no, it's not. And I feel like you laughed because you agreed. I don't like that. But, uh, 
He always told me I was his fast patient. He always told me I was fast patient by 50 pounds. So last year when I lost all that weight, I remember being all excited to go see him because I'm not his fast patient anymore, right? I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I'm fast patient, oh, hell yeah. And he walks in the room that day, and he doesn't even acknowledge me. He just goes right for that little rolly chair that every doctor has in the corner of the room. He goes for it, he rolls it over, and goes, hey, Jill, I just want to say congratulations on the weight loss. However, you're still my fattest patient. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, 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 what happened to that other guy? He goes, oh, that guy died. <laughs> and I'm ready for it, right? I'm like, oh, it's because he was so fat, because he had a heart attack, he had diabetes, a stroke, right? He goes, no, dude, vending machine. <laughs> You guys remember I 